Oh, uh, yeah, and then the flip, and there we go. Oh, yeah. Ah. Oh, oh, hello there, and welcome to WOW Master Track Theater, a show that invites athletes to talk about races from their careers, while also diving into races that they themselves have witnessed, and in some ways, change them as people. Today, your host, Jeff Merrill, will sit down with 209 marathoner, a burrito connoisseur, and some say, the next great American puppeteer. That's right, Scott Fobble is in the house. Together, they're going to sit down and talk about marathoner Sammy Wanjiru and the effects that his 2010 Chicago Marathon had on a young and up-and-coming Scott. So grab another G&T, stop that TikToking, and enjoy as one of America's Americans sits down with American great marathoner, Scott Fobble. I'm Andrew Weeding. Enjoy the show. Hey Andy, it's a uh, mystery, hmm? not master. Mother. But uh, yeah, the race that we're going to be talking about today is the 2010 Chicago Marathon. Yep. Which was a pivotal race uh, in your career, even though you weren't in it. No, I was, uh, I was a freshman at the University of Portland, um, watched the finish on YouTube in my dorm room with David, David Perry, my roommate. David Perry. You were a freshman in 2010. I, I was in the fall of 2010, yeah. Give us a glimpse into your life at that, that moment in time. Uh, I was probably drinking too much, probably wasn't studying enough or sleeping enough. Um, I think at this time, when this race happened, I was still running okay, but it went downhill pretty sharply after that mostly because I wasn't sleeping enough and was trying to run more than I ever had and harder than I ever had so um that's pretty predictable looking back but uh but yeah I was at University of Portland um and just being kind of an irresponsible little shit what was your haircut at that moment in time I had a buzz cut straight buzz cut yep straight buzz cut done in the locker room for free was that because you had a haircut that you didn't like before and you wanted to get rid of it or was it just a No, I thought it would go well with my pierced ears. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I went to Claire's at a um what's that mall, Pioneer Place Mall? You went to Claire's. I went to Claire's to get, you know, cubic zirconium studs in there cuz you know, that's what you do well, as one does as when they become a college freshman sometimes. Um and uh got a buzz cut because I thought it would go well. It didn't. I don't look good with a buzz cut. I got a funny shaped head. Um, yeah. But that's kind of where I was at. Were you living the Rod Dixon lifestyle, as I like to call it, where uh, the famous Rod Dixon quote was, I just want to drink beers and train like an animal? Yeah, I was, uh, I was probably doing more of the first part and less of the second part. That's what we're going to be talking about, where yeah. you watched this race and it probably turned your life around. Yes, this was the seminal moment of my running career. Wow. We're digging in here. Oh, yeah. So let's, let's do it. And just lay out for us um, in non-emotional terms uh, what this race was, what happened. Okay, so 2010 Chicago Marathon. Um, and basically, the, it has come down to the last mile. It's between Tosege, Kebede, and Sammy Winjiru. And it's just an all-out brawl, basically. It's just a, a sprint for um, probably 1,000 meters. These guys going back and forth as hard as they can until Sammy Winjiru unleashes just this massive last 800. Uh, it's pretty startling. Like, Winjiru had been having a terrible year up to this point. He hadn't finished a, uh, He didn't finish London. He had to pull out of a race over the summer and he got a stomach bug three weeks before the race and wasn't even sure he was going to race. And when Jiro had never been a guy who had loved training, he'd showed up to races over, like out of shape and overweight a bunch of times. Um, and he did again uh, this time. And it was, and I think it's, it's kind of startling to, or it's interesting to read about all that stuff after his um, untimely passing, not that long after this, um, which was, uh, you know, still shrouded in mystery. No one a hundred percent knows what happens. Right. That was, and that was in May, the following May. 
Yeah. And this was um, September, October. Yep, October of twenty four or twenty ten. Was this his last marathon? I'm not sure if he ran in London after that. Uh, he might have though. It might have been as very well may have been. So you're watching this in your dorm room with David Perry. Yep. Was he wearing jewelry at the time? I don't think he was a jewelry guy yet. No. Not yet. Yeah. Hadn't gripped him. Yeah. I think one thing that gets lost in this is this is such a long straightaway. Like this straightaway is probably two miles. And it's so hard to drop somebody on a long, flat straightaway. Yeah. Kebede comes literally as close as somebody can possibly come to putting Winjiro away. And um, it's just like the front on angle doesn't give you perspective of how much, how far back Winjiro is. But these are not like minuscule gaps. Like he's really opening it up on him. Like the announcers always talk about like that rubber band being stretched. And right. honestly, like, this is as far as you can stretch a rubber band without it, without it breaking. Like Kebede is laying it down over and over again. Yeah, the the cameraman's even trying to get him, only him, in the screen here. Yeah. Yeah, Wanjiro's back by a good, almost ten yards now. At least, yeah. Yeah. And this is when Wanjiro just breaks this man's soul. And Kebede has not given up yet. No, he's still, he's still. I mean. They've been going back and forth. Why wouldn't he be able to keep doing it? Yeah. But I would say that he, he's put it away right now. Yeah. And he's going, this has got to be like, I don't know, close to 60-second quarter pace, I would think. I think that's probably correct. He is ripping. Man. Here we go. I like that line. Listen, look at the footballs this guy's got. <laughs> oh, Tony Revis. Look at the footballs this guy's got. Yeah. <laughs> Matra mask. He's only 23 at this time, too. Tw 23. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Man. What a beauty. Just an epic finish. Yeah. Lots of, lots of hand signaling. Mm-hmm. Do you do a lot of hand signaling when you're finishing? Is that... uh, I did in Boston when it went really well. I don't know that I would in, if it wasn't going well. Yeah, how many, how many marathons have you had that you'd say went, went well enough to throw some signs at the end? Uh, probably two out of four. It would have been weird to have thrown it in Frankfurt when I was like, uh, I think I was ninth. Uh huh. And not like nobody knew who I was because we were in Frankfurt, Germany. But I think I could have done it, maybe done it in New York. Um, it's four seconds behind Jared, so it's iffy there. And then in Boston, I think I, think I, I deserve to be able to throw it. The yeah, trial is not so much. 12th is a little farther, too far back for that. Yeah, but yeah, Boston, you could definitely take advantage of that and throw yeah. some signs. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that something that you're thinking about at that, at that moment in time? Like, hey, this is, it's, it's rare that you put together a marathon like this. I'm going to take advantage of it and, and throw my signs out there. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think I had like any gang signs or anything like that. Like, no, nothing cool. I didn't spill out blood with my fingers. I just pointed one way and then pointed the other way. But so, is that, is that something that you could think about going forward? Like, Hey, when I have a good one, I want to have something prepared. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe I'll be like, like, uh, trying to think of what something cool and original would be. Yeah, like eating a corn corn on the cob, like I'm nom 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 nom. You, well, are you a corn guy? Is that like what is that? I don't know. It just seems like something nobody else has done. Were you listening to a lot of corn when you had your shaved head and pierced ears? <laughs> no, it was mostly uh, right above it by Drake. This race was a very important race to you. What did it do for you for your running career? Um, I think it just showed me like how much, how far you can get just by like w willingness to dig really, really hard. Um, um, thanks to the great Sammy Wanjiro. Yeah, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Um, but yeah, this was the part of the show where I, I asked you to uh, make some food, your favorite dish, and send me the <laughs> recipe so that I could make it as well. Oh, I, um, when you sent me that text, like send me your favorite recipe, I thought you meant 
send me your outline for this this thing like send me some info on this race so i don't have a recipe for you oh yeah well i, I knew that yeah yeah so yeah That's we don't have food to eat on my part i thought you were being uh you were joking you thought i was trying to be cool with some different slang terms yeah, for an, so. an outline for a podcast yep mm-hmm. <laughs> i don't do that I'm not that cool <laughs> i'm talking about food All and right. now because of you i'm not going to eat dinner tonight this has been fantastic, Fobs, unless you have something else to add that we no. missed. No, I'm good. Just, I'm good. When this all breaks, we'd love to have you back on the Tracklandia show in front of uh, 40 to 50 of your most adoring fans. I would love to be there. It's done. All right. Lock Set it in. in stone. And this has been the first episode of Wow! Mystery Track Theater. I'm your host, Jeff Merrill. This is Scott Fobble. We'll catch you next time. Thanks, Thanks for again, having me, Bob. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Anytime.